Hey, I'm Mr. Terry. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, in today's video, we are checking out, I think, a really interesting topic, and that is, why did Sweden and Norway break up? You know, you put those two countries together and you have a very formidable nation with uh, deep histories, resources, geographic and geopolitical influence. What went wrong? All right, this comes from a channel favorite, and that is History Matters. They are the kings of short form, little kind of documentary style history videos. When you want something that's just between three to five minutes, there's really nothing better out there. So the original video link is down below. Make sure you support them by checking out the video, giving it a view, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. And if you want to see more commentary from a history teacher, definitely hit that sub button. Love to have you around our community. All right, and with that, let's get started. Breakups are never easy, Sad. especially when your ex goes on to become a wealthy petrostate. <laughs> this is what happened to Sweden, which equivalent? was in a union with Norway for almost a century until their split in 1905. Right. But what caused this dissolution? Why did Sweden and Norway break up? Yeah. So, as of the closing years of the Napoleonic Wars, Norway was a oh. part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Of course, Napoleon. Frederick the Sixth had just sided with Napoleon. Okay, of course, I had to do something with Napoleon. I mean, the borders of Europe very, very uh, heavily changed because of Napoleon. Some of it, like Congress of Vienna ideas, were after he had been basically removed from power. They didn't want France to be a threat again, so um, countries redrew a lot of borders and one of, with one of the ideas basically ringing France with larger, more powerful states. That's going to cause problems though, because you're going to, going to be, um, you know, uh, potentially like uh, dissolving some or incorporating ones that may not get along together. But nevertheless, the whole idea of trying to keep there from being another Napoleon uh, did that. Not saying that's exactly what's going on here, but Napoleon just seems to be getting involved in everything in the uh, 19th century. Now, a lot of countries in Europe had done the same previously, like Russia, who had used Swedish closeness with Britain as justification to invade it and grab Finland for its own. Sure. Soon after this, Russia... Well, France, France, or France, Russia wanted um, warm water ports, too. If you go back to, like, Peter the Great of Russia, who really wanted to westernize Russia, make it more like Western Europe, I was trying to take over territory because they didn't have any warm water ports. And the Baltic Sea still freezes sometimes, but nevertheless, those areas around the Baltic area where he will conquer, you know, get in wars with Sweden will create St. Petersburg, the new capital of Russia. Um, but they'll continue those ambitions later on with Catherine the Great, who later goes after the Ottoman Empire for territory around Crimea and the Baltic state, or, um, sorry, uh, the Black Sea. She decided that it didn't like Bruh. Napoleon anymore, and so it Bruh. was time for new allies. The Swedish king wasn't doing much because of a heart attack, but his government Ouch. did sense an opportunity. Okay. Finland wasn't coming back, but by siding with the coalition against Napoleon and his Danish ally, Sweden could gain Norway. Something which Britain, Russia, and Prussia agreed to. And even the Danish Russia? king agreed to Prussia? its loss, providing he got to keep Greenland and Iceland. The people of Norway were not happy with suddenly being the subjects of the Swedish king, and so sure. the Prince of Denmark, called Christian, because of course he was, declared himself the king of Norway in 1814 and proclaimed its independence. Well, it seems like, I mean, honestly, if Norway and Sweden were going to be unified, it would have happened centuries before that. But there's centuries of history uh, between the two, both positive and and and, very, and conflicting as well, though. So it seems like that would happen a long time ago, not just all of a sudden in like the 1800s. Against the Allies, he stood no chance of succeeding. But whilst they were busy fighting Napoleon, there was an opportunity to win political support, and he turned to Britain, whom he felt would recognise the plight of the Norwegian people and do the right thing to stop them from being handed over to a foreign king. But fun fact, no tensions yeah. rose, and when the Swedish came to claim their prize, fighting broke out. This lasted for about two weeks and ended with the Swedish making some concessions in return <laughs> for Norway joining the union voluntarily. Norway would keep its semi-democratic constitution, the king's powers there would be limited, and Norway would maintain separate armed forces. Relations between the two states improved over the next half a century, with the Swedish-based kings presenting a much more conciliatory tone to the Norwegian subjects. Mm. Although by doing this, they angered Swedish politicians, who saw Norway as the junior partner in the union, and many there feared that Norway would never be placated and would simply keep asking for more. And Wait, the Swedish? There was Imperial Swedes? Imperial Swedes? No way! They weren't wrong. Norwegian politicians kept asking for more autonomy over the course of the late 19th century. The big one was when in 1891 Norwegian elections saw the Liberal Party victorious. The Liberals <laughs> were proponents of Norwegian independence, but if right. that couldn't be achieved then they demanded separate foreign and trade policy for Norway. This was a big no-no since at that point the Union would essentially be dead. Yeah. The Norwegian government made a formal request for these new powers Let and the Swedish responded friends. with a well-formulated logical argument. 
no, and if you keep asking, we're going to invade. So it sounds like a thing where Norway was definitely the one, the one that didn't want to be unified more than the other way around with the Swedes. Makes the sense. Liberals backed down and over the next decade instead opted to focus on Norway. They removed any reference to the Union from their flag, massively increased the size of the armed forces and built up border defences in case of an invasion. In and in retaliation, the Swedish true? ended free trade between the two and imposed tariffs on products from Britain, Norway's largest trade partner. It was 1905 that marked the death of the Union, though, when the Norwegian government passed a law establishing itself with separate diplomatic service. Do, the king do, vetoed do. this, the government resigned, Nedge. the king refused to accept their resignation or appoint a new government, and as such, the Norwegians argued that he was in violation of the constitution by leaving oh. Norway without leadership, and in response, the Norwegian parliament declared its independence. They're in like, response, we'll be fine. Sweden mobilized, which led Norway to do the same, and both armies sat on the border facing off. Swedish politicians and commanders were ready for war, and it was only when the Swedish people were overwhelmingly against military action that they backed down. Yeah. This support was largely due to the Norwegian referendum in which 99.9% .9 of voters backed independence, mm. which made it clear to everyone that Sweden yeah. could no longer force Norway to stay. Of course, 99? Is that what it said? 99%? Yeah, anytime you have something like that, that's crazy. Um, you know, more of these issues are going to be addressed after World War One with self-determination, ideas of self-determination after World War One. But, you know, th this is one of those scenarios, though, where luckily it didn't break out in some kind of catastrophic war, um, you know, that brought in multiple nations, right? Because you have Norway. Norway is uh, deeply supported by the British. Um, Sweden's got history with you know other parts of Eastern Europe and stuff like that. So good thing it didn't come to that. And the public, you know, like the public standing up saying, hey, no, we don't want military action. That's great. As such, the Swedish people threatened mutiny in the army and the general strike if Norway was invaded, which yeah. meant that King Oscar II had no choice but to acknowledge Nobody wants the end it. of the Union. The Norwegian people then voted for a prince of Denmark to become king of Norway. And thus, after a mere 500 years of being controlled by a foreign power, Norway would once again be an independent state. Yay! I hope you enjoyed this episode with a special thanks to my patrons, James Norway. Gizinet, Kelly Moneymaker, Mr. Wolf, Sky Chappelle. Heck yeah, shout out to the patrons. Thank you to my patrons too. All right, let's wrap this up. All right, that was a short little fun thing that, again, kind of talked about more of the the, the more recent um, conflict there. Now, I have a lot of viewers who are from Sweden and Norway, and I'd love to hear your opinions about this, too, down in the comments. Um, could anything like this happen, you think, again? Could there ever be a unification? Um, how would you describe the relationship right now between um, Swedes and Norwegians? Um, is it just amicable, kind of at best? Is there still hostility? And... Maybe how all the differences, too, between kind of the older generation and the new generation, too. Anyway, all right. So if you like this video, um, you'll definitely like more of History Matters. Again, these short-form videos are a lot of fun. And hopefully you learned a little bit from my perspective as well. But I know I learned a lot. Anyways, with that, we'll see you next time. Bye.